What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Undrafted Views. We're here. We talk sports from the sidelines. Yep. And today, we're going to continue our conversation about the NBA restart, which we are super excited about. We have some other things we want to talk about and discuss. You know, there's a lot going on. And so now with the players arriving to the bubble in Orlando, I don't know. I don't so let's, know. let's get started. Yeah. So yeah, players are in Orlando and unfortunately they had to check into a two-star hotel. <laughs> Have okay. you seen the pictures? Uh-uh. No. Okay, so unacceptable. Let's, unacceptable. Just get, let's just get some things out of the way first. Number one, they didn't have to go. All right. So they did have a choice. That's number one. Number two, they're not paying for their accommodations. They I never know, pay for anything. I know, but they're not paying. Mm-hmm. Number three, we're in a pandemic. So the NBA has done the best that they can to make sure that they keep the environment safe and healthy for our players. Okay. However, <laughs> the accommodations are flat out no. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, no. I wouldn't even want to say... I mean, Mm -hmm. now granted, these guys, they're used to staying in five-star suites, penthouse suites, Mm -hmm. and you're going to just throw them into the Hampton Inn? Like, (laughs) is it unacceptable? No, but let me tell you, and some of these players are used to top-notch accommodations since their college years. Yeah. So this type of luxury and privileged treatment that they've been receiving has been for years. Now to get here... And you have to stay at the Motel 6? I know. <laughs> no, Motel 6, turn the light off. Because that is, that's a hot mess. Oh, yeah. I so mad, but at least they got clean sheets. They got somewhere to shower. Mm. I guess. Yeah. This would be a true test of mental toughness for sure. Because I'm telling you, if my accommodations is not right, my mind is messed Oh. Yeah, it ruins the whole trip. And in this case, it's not like you can get an upgrade. It's not like you can go down to the concierge and say, oh, can I get an upgrade? I'm willing to pay for the upgrade. There is no upgrade. Everybody has that same two-star room. Does everybody have the same two-star room? Because oh. I'm quite sure these hotels have suites, junior suites, presidential suites. I'm quite sure they do. Who's so who do you up? think and who do you think gets the the presidential suite? Coaching Adam, staff? Adam Adam Where's Adam Silverstein? Can I get his accommodations? Ooh, I know. Where is uh, I did read that he was coming into the bubble, but he did, he wasn't going to stay. He was going to go in and out. No, he's I'm gonna, gonna, this COVID test too while he's in and out. I'm going to need him to stay in the bubble. How about that? Uh-huh. See, that's what I, that's the type of stuff I'm talking about. When people you have these executives that make decisions for people, and then they themselves don't want to abide by the decisions. Isn't that interesting? Oh, I hate it. Yeah. I hate it. Do as I say, not as I do. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 So no, I'm not here for it. I'm not here for it. But like Patrick Beverly said, if you saw his Instagram post, <laughs> the bubble is what you make it. Check mm-hmm. ball. Yeah. Ball. Um, yes. Yeah. Check it up. Interesting. So, so I heard that um, some players are very unhappy with the food. So, not only is the room horrible, but now <laughs> the food is horrible too. I mean, this is going oh. to be a big mental and physical challenge for many players. Probably ninety eight percent of the league. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's so funny. It's almost like cafeteria food like it's really yeah. from the looks of it it may taste really good but from the pictures that mm-hmm. have been you know floating uh on social media Mm-mm. cafeteria and i don't want to throw out any restaurants but i got a few of them in mind <laughs> i'm like Mm-mm, i couldn't do it when i saw i don't know who posted this one but when i saw the noodles in this yes. styrofoam bowl i'm like is there any oil oh, number one are they cooked number two is there any oil on that Ooh, oh, I know. Like raw, raw noodles. I'm just like, oh, I'm so sorry, sir. And I don't even understand why they thought that this, these meals that they're serving these players would be sufficient. We're talking about grown athletic men, yeah, eating bird food. I don't, I don't get it. I don't. Yeah. Get it. So you want them to be famished? I know, I know. And you want me to practice? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. You want me to run scrimmages? And you want me to play a basketball game? 
on 200 calories for you know it's like come on do you not know as i'm eating i'm burning yeah it's unbelievable i don't know who came up with that like i said like adam silver and all these brilliant minds that's the best they can come up with in this three-month hiatus but i understand it's only for the 48-hour quarantine because okay. once they're released from quarantine after um, pre uh, presenting two negative COVID-19 tests, mm -hmm. then they will have options for five restaurants. But catch this, from the five restaurants, four of them are owned by the Rockets owner. I read that. Um, oh my God. Uh-uh. Hey. Uh -huh. Okay, so maybe he'll make a call and say, hey, make sure we have the filet mignons yeah. ready for yeah. the players. Yeah. I think it's only for their 48 hour quarantine, but I don't care. These are grown men. Yeah. They need more food than that. I'm sorry. And that it did not look good. I it can tell did. you right now, I wish I would serve that to somebody that was staying in my home. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. That's horrible. It's okay. Really bad. Yeah, okay. So, so they have a 48 hour quarantine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, so they have a 48 hour quarantine the moment they arrive at the bubble, yes. right? They're not allowed to leave their rooms. Mm -hmm. They can't do anything. You can't go to practice until you get the two tests, negative right. tests. Right. But here's what's interesting to me. How is it that the players are able to get their results so quickly? What are we talking about here? They have a dedicated lab now to do the test. I mean, come on. You gotta be kidding me. When it's taking regular citizens, yeah. regular regular people, mm -hmm. <laughs> almost a week to get their results back. Yeah. See, yeah. that wouldn't work. That wouldn't work for NBA players because, hey, they got to go to practice. I got to go play a game. I don't have five to seven days to sit around and wait for my results. Yeah, but they're in a bubble. We're talking about people who are at home with their families yeah. waiting to get tests, going to work, waiting to get test results back. I know. I know. It's crazy. I don't understand how these conglomerates, Ooh. the NBA. Yeah. <laughs> conglomerates. Okay. I don't understand how they're able to get away with stuff like that. I know. <laughs> I, I think know. there's a certain level of morality. I agree. You know, that the league should have. I agree. It's like, you know what? You know what? Um, all the NBA players, they're, they're, uh, come to the front of the line, get your tests and get your results. Meanwhile, everybody else, uh, you got to wait because we have to go play this game on a hardwood floor and bounce a ball up and down. Like, how is that? How does that take precedence? It doesn't because it's not essential. It's, it's not essential. <laughs> it's not. It's not. Mm -hmm. It's not essential. It is back to the almighty dollar and how we can make sure that this revenue continues to come in for these owners this league and these players. That is it. That's, yeah. it. That's it. It's nothing else. And so while they're doing all of that, we will be entertained. Now, while I can't wait for them to come back, because I would love to be entertained, the circumstances, though, still is a little bit sketchy to me. And I don't, I don't, I'm not comfortable with it. That's all. Right, right. I mean, I don't know. I hope it's entertaining basketball. I really do. Because when I look at who is not playing versus who is I mean, come on. The Brooklyn Nets picked up a guy who hasn't played in the league since when? And he's 40 now, right? <laughs> yes. What's his name? Jamal oh. Crawford? Yes. And they, and I heard the last time he played when he was about 38, I want to say, that he really wasn't that good. No, he scored like, I think he averaged six points a game. But once he get in the zone, he can, he can play. But I'm waiting for you to get in the zone. No, the Brooklyn Nets said, you, you, you. Hey, you. you. Come on. <laughs> That's what I, I am excited about Michael Beasley, though, because, you know, he's played for the Lakers. But I am excited about him. But come on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I just don't know that it's going to be entertaining and competitive basketball. I just I'm not convinced that we are going to see the best product. A, because they've been on a long layover. B, because so many good players are out. And then lastly, they're going to be uncomfortable knowing that they don't have any good food. Well, maybe they do once they're done with quarantine. Right. They got to go back to a room that's subpar. Absolutely. You know, it's like, uh, I just don't know that this is going to be the perfect scenario mm -hmm. for players to really give us their best performance. I think the players need to go to these games with the mental 
mindset that they're playing street ball. Because I know in our last episode, you mentioned about the sterile environment and yeah. that they might as well be playing at the YMCA or at the local gym. When I saw what it looks like on some photos this week, I was yep. like, ooh, they are playing at the YMCA. They might as well go down the street over here um, near my home and play um, at the... <laughs> um, this place where high schoolers go and shoot basketball, you know, they teach them how to the fundamentals. I mean, the, the yeah. court is no bigger than that. I, was I like, know. Oh my god! Oh my god! Yeah. They play street ball. Street ball. So you, you they're gonna have to, they're gonna have to dig in their childhood. Mm -hmm. <laughs> dig deep. Yeah. yeah. Dig deep to get some, you know, to be encouraged to play this game. That's horrible. I know. Yeah. I know. But and I think what this is really gonna show all of us is who really has love for the game versus who's doing it for all of it. Yeah, the money and the luxuries and the fame and the recognition. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh -huh. Ooh, this right here, I'm telling you, because you're right, since there'll be no fans, mm -hmm. nobody, nobody will have home court advantage. Yeah. Are you in it for the right reasons? I tell you, if you can't- We're going to find out. out. Yeah. Oh, I'm you're going to have to dig deep, dig deep. You may have to go to middle school. Uh, athletes, you may have to go to middle school. How you used to play when you were in middle school, because I can tell you, if you're looking for the cop, and I would even say the college experience for a lot of these players is nothing what they're going to be dealing with in the bubble. Oh my yeah. god, the college experience was way better. Oh, so yeah, so many of them went to you know top notch universities, they did, but let's not forget most, if not, well. I don't know. I think I would venture to say 75% of NBA players came from very humble beginnings. Did they? I, I would venture to say 75%. Yeah. I believe that. I believe I that. As they're coming up, not, not high school, not starting high school, you know, when they were playing AAU ball and they had to, you know, get their parents to, to save money up to get the tennis shoes and stuff like that. If they can just think back, go back to their roots, like you said, Deep, the deep, deep, yeah. deep, 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 <laughs> because yeah. only you're gonna be able to sustain your stay at this bubble is that you dig deep. Yeah, I know, I know. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah, because now you know what the money that they're making now qualifies them for divas. So <laughs> I know. You know why would I want to go back? Why would I want to go back? I know. And some players been in the league 10, 12, 15 years. I mean, that's hard. That's like, I don't know how they're going to do it, but we're going to find out. And we'll be right here watching and we're going to yeah. talk about it. How about that? Yeah. And so much is at stake. You know, we're talking about the NBA championship. Now, now that I think about all of these different variables, you know, so many things working against a player, uh -huh. maybe this might be the hardest championship to win. You know, Giannis may have a point because he, mm -hmm. he said that. I heard him say that. And I'm like, that may once because before I didn't believe it. I'm like, y'all know, you know what? Y'all mm -hmm. suck it up. Come on now, y'all ball players. Y'all make a lot of money. This ain't nothing. But now that they're on site, I'm like, ooh. Uh-huh. Yeah, this may be kind of hard because I'm telling you, if your accommodations are not right, it will mess up your mental. It will mess up your mental. When you know that you've stayed places before that are much better. When you know that the food that you've eaten have been amazing for your body, and now you're with this, yeah, this might love the game. This right here will prove the love of the game right here. It just it's, it has to. Yeah, but you know, some people are able to bring in their personal chefs to make sure that they're able to nourish their bodies properly. <laughs> I'm not now. Here. I know. I'm not here. I know. That's an added advantage. So while these other players on these other teams, they don't have that luxury or that privilege. There we go with the privilege, the word privilege yeah, again, yeah. to have these nutritious meals. We're going to leave them with these box lunches. Yeah. No, y'all going to eat this lunch and gone. Gone yeah. now. No, they yeah. not. And you want me to now, my grown, big grown athletic body to play against somebody who's fully nourished. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. See? Mm -mm. I know. See, that's what I'm there saying. There is no level playing field at all. But no is it ever, though? 
No. Let's just think about it from a broad spectrum. Mm. Take basketball out of the equation. Is yeah. it ever? No. No. I know. That's so why would this be class. any different? It, it won't. There's a class system even within. Mm -hmm. So I know you're right. It's no different. It's no different. Yeah. But when, but it's these types of circumstances and situations that have you think about it, where you're like, oh, what is going on? You know, when it's, <laughs> when it's on full display, right? Then it, it allows you to take a second look at this. Is not cool. It's not cool. It, it just isn't. Now, if you're on the upside of that, oh, you're fine. You love it. You you know you're sleeping on a bed of rose petals. Yeah. But if you're not on that side and you're on the other side, you're sleeping on rocks. Right. It's not cool. It's not I cool. know. And then I you know. got to keep it somewhere in the middle, you know, and then, you know, I guess it's okay. Yeah. And <laughs> but I know that they're observing. Oh, you know, yeah. they're watching. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. They yeah. may not say anything now. Mm -hmm. Unless something go wrong, they're gonna be singing like birds. That's how we get yeah. our, our information um now, our inside information. How do you think we get it? Somebody gets fed up. Yeah, okay. that's interesting. But you know what? To be honest, some of the people who, some of the players who are complaining, they need not worry because they'll be going home rather quickly. <laughs> they might as well go on. They didn't need to buy all those outfits. You know what? And and to be honest, live out of your suitcase. Why even, why even put it in the drawer? Why even put it in the drawer? Yeah, because some of y'all going home. Get, your flight will be game right after game eight. Matter of fact, the night of game eight for you. Yeah. 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 You, yeah. You're, you're right. Yeah. Some so, people going zero oh, and eight. <laughs> <laughs> some people. Some people going zero oh, and eight for real. Zero oh, and eight. You know what? Mm -hmm. I wonder if we'll be able to tell when the team is done, like when they're mentally done. Because so, everybody's yeah. gonna go in game one, they're gonna be ready. Oh, we about to fight. This is about to be check ball. It's gonna be <laughs> on, right? And then game two, they're gonna be like, "Oh, okay, no, we still got it, y'all. Come on, come on, we're not that far away." By game four, people who know they ain't gonna make it, they're gonna be like, "You know what? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I'm not even gonna exert myself. You think I'm gonna um, mess up my knee on this YMCA court? No." I know. I know. Why should I even take my tennis shoes out the box? These are brand new. You know, it's like, mm -mm. Mm -mm. yeah, it's going to be interesting, though. I really hope we get quality basketball like that is my main thing, because you know how you kind of wait for something you anticipate it yeah. and then you get it. And it's like, oh, no, it's not it's not what I thought it would be. I just hope I don't get disappointed. You know what though? If if they do not play quality basketball, the ratings will show, Ooh. and the NBA is going to look back and they're going to say we spent all this money and nobody's watching. <laughs> but how much money did they really spend? Because on those accommodations, I'm sure they got a killer deal. <laughs> you know. Ooh. But again, what was 150 million? There was some number. I don't even know where I got that from. There was a number at the end of the day. If nobody's watching, it is a bust. Bubble or bust. Oh, we I know. Bubble okay. or bust. Well, hey, we're gonna see. We are going to be here step by step for the NBA season. The restart. Oh, July 30th can't get here soon oh, enough. Yeah. And you know, I read somewhere that it was originally July 31st and they moved it up a day. Oh, one day. Hmm. Thank you. <laughs> I know. What was the reasoning behind that? I, I saw oh. that too. Yeah. Oh, hmm. But the, yeah. I thank you. I thank you. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait. Oh, I'm just, you know what? Mm -mm. It's almost like Christmas. I'm like, I'm ready. Oh, you're right. And will this gift be fruitful or a bust? Because you don't know until you open the package. Right. And I think it's, I honestly think it's starting out as a bust. Players are complaining. How are you going to have the players complaining about the rooms? And I did see a picture of one. And I was like, wow, I don't even know if I would stay there. We, I would. I would stay there. I don't know. I saw this old mirror on the wall. It looked like some 1922. Mm -mm. It just looked. Uh, uh. It just wasn't. I'm sorry. You if know. the players continue to complain, it's going to carry over into their game. Yes. They're yes. going to start missing their family. They're going to start. It's just not. They're going to be disgruntled. You don't have no fans to pump you up, get you going. They won't have it. You know, I don't know. And that's just it. <laughs> 
Yeah. You had a you had a choice. I'll go back to that. You keep saying they had a choice. They did. They didn't have to go. They did not have to go. They they were not forced to go play. Okay. Fair enough. They weren't. But some people have that loyalty and, you know, would feel like they're letting their team down. You know, in an earlier episode, we talked about that. You're just going to let your your team go to battle without you? I agree. I agree. Hmm. I agree. I totally agree. I totally agree. And I'm glad that they are going to stick it on out. But I'm telling you, this is where you need to dig deep. Dig deep. deep. (laughs) Go way back. Way Way back. back. Mm -hmm. Way back. Middle school, elementary school, way back. Oh, my God. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Anyway, uh, thank you guys for tuning in. We are going to wrap this episode up. See you guys on the next one of Undrafted Views with Evay and Shah. (laughs) (laughs) All right. See you guys.